Greetings viewers and welcome to what I'm hoping will be another educational video for you. If you clicked on this video, you are here to learn about turrets. So let's start talking about them. What are they? What do they do? How do we get them? So these are the two types of turrets you can get in the game that are powered. There are other turrets that I'll cover in another video. We've got our SMG turrets here and we've got our shotgun turrets. So how do we get our hands on these things? Well, same as all the other traps. One, you can purchase it from a merchant if they have it available. Two, you can directly loot one of these uh, as you're scavenging the wasteland, or you can craft them. There's two ways that you can go about crafting them. They also do require a workbench. The first way that you can unlock them is by putting points into advanced engineering. So we'll go to advanced engineering, it's in the intellect tree. So when we come down here to advanced engineering, the other traps that we've covered required level three in advanced engineering. You must get level four as you see at the top there, learn to craft shotgun turrets. And then you're gonna need level five to be able to get SMG turrets. As you see up at the top, it says learn to craft SMG auto turrets for the best ranged base defense. A Little bit of foreshadowing there. Also, when you go into this, this is when you will get the most XP from the electrical trap kills, which is 50%. This is gonna require level 10 in intellect which is going to require quite a few points to max out this tree so it is definitely going to be a little bit later game by the time you get to the point where you can craft smg turrets just based on skill points alone chances are you're going to find the schematic long before then however the other option you have is by finding one of the, the uh, schematics here so as you can see here's the schematic for the smg turret and here's the schematic for the shotgun turret this little open book icon indicates that I already know this, and I know that because I have advanced engineering. Or if you've already previously read the book, it'll be like that. If you have not yet read it, the icon will look like this, where it's a closed book. Until you read it, then again, it'll open. So that's how you can craft them. What do these things take? So these are the parts that are required to make the SMG turret. These are the parts that are required to make the shotgun turret. Now, keep in mind, this is with maxed out advanced engineering. The amount that it's going to require if you have no points in there, basically if you just found the schematic looting, then your, the requirements are going to be a little bit more hefty. So now we've got our turrets crafted. What can we do with them? So we've got it placed down in the world. And when you let's go ahead and show you what happens when you place these things. When you go to place it, it'll give you the cone. So it'll show you what area it's going to cover. And if I left click, it's going to rotate it. And what's nice is it doesn't have to just face one of the four cardinal directions. You can go about halfway in between so it's at a nice angle. So depending on what kind of coverage area you want, you can uh, pretty much cover anything in your base that you can think of. So you can see that it's got a pretty wide cone on it. it the field of view is actually probably a little bit bigger and better than that, especially if you have it on an elevated position. It's kind of stopping right now because of the floor. But if that was not there and this was on a single pole, up in the air, you can see that it kind of angles down even better. So the further back it is, it actually has a farther range on it. So we've got this thing placed in the world. What do we do with it? So let's go ahead and click on our shotgun turret here. I'm going to hit E and it's going to open up this menu here. So this thing is basically a turret with a built-in motion sensor, which is one of the com required components to build it. So that makes sense. So up here we have this targeting option. These are grayed out because chances are you probably do not want to target yourself. There's that, I feel like that's kind of silly. I don't know why that's an option. I guess that's just there because it uses the same uh, background information as the motion sensor itself. So not recommended to have self or friends targeted unless you're just messing with them and you want to shoot them a little bit and maybe scare them, prank them, whatever. Typically, I'll leave strangers and zombies to targeted on here so if it's this little peach color you'll know that it's active if i turn that off it will not shoot at the zombies so you definitely want that on this is the slot where the ammo goes when you go to put ammo in these things it only takes basic ammo so the just the generic shotgun ammo that you find around the world will go in there you don't have to drag it you can also hold shift and left click and it will automatically populate that area you cannot put reaching rounds or ap slugs in there if i'm holding shift and clicking it's just dumping it down here on my tool belt I try and drag and click, it will not go in there. So put it in there. Same thing like the dart trap. You must lock the ammo for this to work. If this is not clicked, this thing will not fire. So if you've got it hooked up properly, you've got power running to it, there's zombies in front of it, or they're targeted, and this thing is not working, chances are you haven't locked it. So the last thing that we have here is this camera preview. If I click on it, 
it says down at the bottom, you must power this component to use the camera function. So you can manually go into this thing and see what it's seeing. So then you can kind of get a better uh, idea of its field of view and what it can and can't see. And you can actually also manually fire it from there. So let's do that real quick. Let's equip our wire tool. We've got our little basic circuit here that we've been using and we're just gonna hook up the shotgun turret on the end. So I just right click the relay, right click the turret. Now, if I go in here, it's still not powered. Gotta go turn on my power source. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our switch. Also, when you equip the wire tool, it shows you in yellow the, uh, the field of view cone on this thing. So now we can see the 15 watts that this thing requires is yellow, meaning it's powered. We hit E, come into here, and now when I click camera preview, it's gonna give me this full window. And as I move my mouse around, I have a little laser pointer that's gonna show me what this thing is doing. Hello. And uh, you can manually fire it. It does have a little bit of a delay if I just sit here and spam the button as fast as I can. This is as fast as it shoots. And it kind of gets angry. So even when you hear this thing automatically firing by itself, it'll kind of dump two rounds and then it takes a second before it shoots again. These things will damage blocks. So it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. We'll turn around. That's what I have this block here for. We're going to just shoot it one time. I'm going to hit tab to get out of that menu. I'm going to hit tab again. We're going to switch to our nail gun and if you notice it took eight damage and that's just because there's eight pellets in the shotgun shell so we can repair that the smg turret shoots a single nine mil round so let's go back to this i'm going to left click to disconnect it right click my relay and we're going to right click on our smg turret this one i have already loaded up and locked the ammo in it's the same procedure for loading ammo it only takes regular just generic 9 mil ammo you cannot put high power ammo in here and you cannot put the ap ammo in there it will not take it so save that for you to use in your 9 mil weapons and put this in there if you're planning on using these for your horde defense make sure you lock the ammo so we're going to come over here to this one that we've got active it's powered we're going to click on our window same exact thing it's got the little laser pointer just a different graphic for the weapon itself so excuse me Shoot that block one time, I'm gonna hit tab. And look, it only took one damage. So it's not a huge deal if you've got this thing firing repeatedly over and over and over again at a catwalk or a wall that's behind where the zombies are coming in, I would recommend that it's made out of a tougher material or that you have access to potentially get behind where it is to repair it. Although if that's the case, chances are the zombies are probably just gonna try and bash through the wall to get to you. So you also would probably not wanna have it pointed at your fighting position. These things will hurt you as, again, evidence that they can target you. It is bullets in the game flying. So if I'm standing here and this is my fighting position and that's where the turrets are set up, they would damage you if they hit you. So I would not recommend having them point at you. I have seen and been told that these things will set off demolisher buttons. I have tried multiple times to go into manual mode and I've put the laser on their button and fired multiple rounds into it and it did not go off. I've never personally had one set off a demolisher. Other people claim that it, it happens, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, coming from me, they will not set off demolisher buttons. So, again, not only will they damage blocks, but they will damage each other. Probably not recommended to have them pointing at each other. So if I were to come into here, get my little preview, put my laser right on the other turret, Shoot it a couple times. It's damaged. And if you look in the bottom there, these things take forged steel, mechanical parts, and electrical parts to repair. Let's put a uh, put a couple rounds into the shotgun turret here. Right click, same thing. Forged iron, mechanical parts, electrical parts. So, how would I recommend using these things? Obviously, again, turn that off. We're not, we don't want to fight on the ground. You don't want to put these things where the zombies can get to them. They, if they can touch them, they will punch them. They'll break them. As you, as you saw, they require a lot of resources to build. So, not recommended to just let them get smashed. I would put them up in a protected position or elevated position somewhere that you can reach it. So, in the middle of combat, you can reload it if you're running out of ammo. And so that the zombies can't get to it. So let's take a look at this setup real quick right here. This was the one we used previously for other demonstrations as the zombies would come to our fighting position here. We've got two turrets set up. I've got an SMG and a shotgun turret. 
they are angled in this direction here. So as you can see, their field of view cone is pretty much covering this whole area. So anything that comes within here, they are gonna automatically start getting blasted and they're gonna be basically devastated. These things do a bit of damage. Um, they can only shoot so many zombies at a time. So if there's a huge swarm of them, you're not, it's not gonna just knock them down. I would recommend setting it up like this just so you have a space here so the zombies can't get to it. May even be better one over. So that way there's not a chance that they're getting pushed out of the way while they pile up and happen to get over here or maybe smack one of them while they're falling. Keep in mind that if cops are trying to puke at you from wherever they're at, they can and will damage these things if the uh, puke hits them. So let's just come inside here real quick. I've got this thing wired up just like before. So we'll go ahead and turn this on, turn that on. We'll uh, spawn a couple of our leans. I'm not going to do anything, but let them get devastated. And that's it. As you can see, uh, pretty effective. These things are basically overkill. I'll go ahead and show you my cord base here from my Perception Only series. All right, so for those of you that are familiar with the Perception Only series, you'll recognize this as my horde base. For those of you that have not seen it, this is what it looks like. So this is a actual in practice space that as you can see by the time up top I did do a video where I put this thing to the test for day 7000 horde and we ended up coming out victorious so you can always check that video out if you'd like to see it I did use a rocket launcher in there but had I not used that and just let the zombies come they would have just been shredded by these turrets so let's take a look at it from the inside so this was obviously my first fighting position here at the hatch. I did use bars here. That was before that I realized that you could actually reach through and use railings. So right now I can't interact with this turret at all. But from left and right of my fighting positions, I did install these turrets where I could get to them. They cover quite a large area, that little cone. So I've got two SMG turrets there. I initially started out with one shotgun turret up here and its sole purpose was simply just bird defense but I ended up adding a second one just once the hordes got a little bit tougher and it also kind of covers this walkway as well for the uh, zombies that make it past those turrets. I do have a shotgun on the roof, uh, on the corner of this roof that's kind of looking at the one uh, entry point that they have to get up to our elevation. And then on this side, we have an SMG turret kind of doing the same thing. It does curve off a little bit to the side there, but it still hits them as they're crossing around, crossing over or coming around on the grass here if they fell off and they're running to get back up or they're spawning and coming through here. So very simple. These things are extremely effective. This could theoretically be an AFK base as long as I had everything full and it didn't deplete all the ammunition from these things. You could sit here and just do nothing but reload turrets as you play. However, unless you've got the proper skills specced out for that, you're going to get zero XP. So I would not recommend it. So as you can see, even with a day 7,000 horde, these things pretty much uh, handle their own. As long as you keep them fed with ammo and you keep them repaired to a point where they'll keep shooting, they'll dish out the pain and the zombies are basically going to get wiped out. So let's head over to our other big base that we've built here with all of our layered traps set up. I've modified it again a little bit. So let's take this off because that yellow cone's annoying. So we've got our blade trap set up here like I showed you in that video. We've got our electric wires that are running across the walkway here. We've got our dart traps. And then what I've added here are, and we've got some friends coming. I've added some turrets here. I've got two SMG turrets and I've got two shotgun turrets that are covering kind of the walkway where they're gonna have to be crossing through the electric wires while getting shot with dart traps. Plus these things will be shooting while they're stationary. I highly doubt that any zombies would make it even past that first turn to uh, to get to us at the window with these here, the way that they're set up. Again, I'm using railings. If these were bars, this would not work. But while I'm back here and I'm safe and protected, I can repair my fence posts. I can also just reach up and I can activate my turrets from inside the safety of the base. One thing that I would also recommend too, wherever your fighting position is that you're gonna be, if you don't use one of these turrets, you could use one of the non-powered ones. Stick it up top and let it shoot some birds. But they're, excuse you, apparently uh, she wants to set off the demonstration, so I guess we can give her a show, huh? 
That was uh, not scripted. These are not paid actors. Let's we'll go ahead and turn on our turret. Look at that. Oh, it's a white too. Oh man, it's hitting them while they're all the way over there. See, these, these things are, uh, they're pretty devastating. You can see it moving around and watch the cone. Big Mama's not gonna like this. Oh, look at that. Just getting wrecked by those shotgun turrets. Too bad you can't put mods on there like a choke or anything else. Give it some flaming buckshot, maybe. I'd like that if you could put the uh, advanced ammo types in there, especially for the turrets, but that would be even more overkill than they already are. Well, that was fun. Got a uh, impromptu demonstration. Oh, we still got some friends here. Oh, that was the screamer, so she's dead. All her friends that she called. Well, that was fun, right? So, these things are just absolutely ridiculous. They are overpowered. If you have enough of them and you have enough of a supply of ammo to keep them fed, you can survive really late game hordes with these things. If you want, like, everybody has all these videos where it's like, you know, the most ultimate... Really? Is this a joke? Demonstration's over, lady. Um, anyway... If you really wanted an ultimate, you know... Okay, well. You guys brought this on yourself. Anyway, we'll just have some music while we talk, I guess. So they'll sing you the song of their people. Anyway, as I was saying, so you see people do these videos, they're like, ultimate horde base, click my video, watch now. You could just build a box with nothing but turrets around it that look like this, put some railings on the roof and just absolutely cover the entryway where they would come up to get you with turrets and you would have the ultimate horde base. Again, as long as you have a steady supply of ammo to keep these things fed and repair parts because occasionally cop puke or even buzzards if they're up in this position here, if you're down inside there, would be getting hit. And apparently we, uh, we hit the jackpot here with screamers. Go away. I think that was a radiated cop over there. We don't need him coming and spitting on us. I don't I don't know why they keep showing up. I'm guessing the heat from having these uh all these turrets powered is upsetting her. So I mean that's it. I mean, they've, they've, they've basically helped with my demonstration as is. So one thing that I did not mention, as I same thing with all the other traps, so as of right now, if I hold E, it just goes to this menu. I cannot do anything else until I put a land claim block down. As long as it's inside the confines of the land claim block, you can interact with these. If you hold E, you'll get this menu instead of going to this options here. And the other option that'll pop up is this hand where it says take. I just highlight my mouse over it. I don't click, don't do anything. Highlight it over the hand and release E. It'll do a little quick countdown, which is much faster than the other traps, and then it'll pick it back up into your inventory so that you can place another one in the world to move it to whatever uh, alternate position you've come up with for your horde setup. So there's really not a whole lot to it. Again, you just power them, point them in the direction you want, fill them with ammo, make sure you lock the ammo, and these things will take care of themselves. I, I don't know what else there is to cover with these. They will damage blocks. They'll damage you. And they will definitely damage some zombies. So hopefully you guys found this video somewhat useful and educational and help you employ these things in your base. I appreciate you guys watching. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any kind of constructive criticism or feedback for me is always appreciated. Please tell me what I can do to make my videos better for you. If you just tell me my videos suck, that doesn't help me make them not suck. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.